A brake pad manufacturer guarantees their brake pads to last more than 30,000 miles. A random sample of 35 sets of brake pads lasted an average of 32,000 miles with a sample standard deviation of 4,000 miles. Does the data support the manufacturer's warranty at the .05 significance level? This is a hypothesis test about a mean, and the mean that uh, we're testing about is the 30,000 miles. Is it greater than 30,000 miles, or is it just equal to or less than 30,000 miles? So our null hypothesis is the mean is uh, equal to 30,000 miles. Or, of course, some books like to say um, less than or equal to, which is going to be the opposite of the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis, H sub 1 or H sub A, depending on what you like for your notation, is the mean is greater than 30,000 miles. Because that's the warranty. That's what we're testing. And it's nice to put this in words as well. The mean is greater than, I'm going to have to abbreviate a little bit, is greater than 30,000 miles. All right, then we're going to get the p-value. And the p-value is the, the most involved part of this. Once you get it set up correctly, the p-value is what takes little attention. So first of all, let's pick out what we have. We have uh, mu that we're testing is 30,000 miles. We have a sample mean of 32,000 miles. So that's our x bar is 32,000 miles. Our sample standard deviation is 4,000. It doesn't say anything about knowing the population standard deviation. So this is a sample standard deviation of 4,000 miles. And we have a, a sample size of 30, uh, 35. So n equals 35. So we need that information to find the p-value. Now the p-value is uh, a look at a distribution. And we're going to use a t-distribution because we do not know the population standard devia deviation. And in fact, this uh, problem specifically says we only have the sample standard deviation. So if it doesn't say population standard deviation, you don't have it. So that's going to be a t distribution when we're testing about a mean. So we have this distribution. And the t distribution looks a lot like the normal distribution, but uh, it changes its shape from, from wide and fat to tall and skinny depending on um, the degrees of freedom. And that, and that is based on the sample size. So we have this hypothesized mean of 30,000. So we're saying if that's true, if, if the mean really is 30,000 miles, then we came along and got 32,000 miles, then what is that probability that we would get that value or something more extreme, something farther from the mean uh, than, than 32,000 miles or, or farther from the mean of 30,000 miles? That's what the p-value is. So kind of trying to color code this in red for the p-value. It's that area to the right of 32,000. Now it's to the right of because our, um, our alternative hypothesis is strictly greater than. If it was less than, we'd be talking about some value lower than this, probably 25,000 or something like that. And we would be looking at the area to the left here. But we're looking at the area to the right, and we're in luck because uh, Excel... When you use the t-distribution formula in Excel, it gives you this area to the right of this number. So the t-dist t -dist function is what you're going to use to find this area, which is the p-value. And it's the t-dist of, they use x. I'm going to write t just so we don't confuse x with uh, some other, we use x a lot in statistics for other random variables. So uh, t and then the degrees of freedom you put in there, and then you put in uh, number of tails. In our case, it will be one tail because we have strictly um, greater than. If, if, there are, if our alternative hypothesis was not equal to, that's either less than or greater than, then, uh, then we would do two tails. But this example is going to be one tail. Now, 
this T. I'm going to switch colors here to define what T is. T equals x bar minus the mu in the in the hypotheses divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. Now I'm going to put these things in parentheses because Excel is pretty picky about this. Make sure you put this in parentheses. Otherwise, well, you'll just get the wrong answer. So this is what I'm going to type in. If you're more comfortable just typing all this this stuff in, all these numbers in, in a calculator, and then going to Excel for the t distribution, well, that's fine. But I'm going to type it in all at once. So t dist equals t dist. And like I promised, I open up the parentheses to um, to start this function, but I'm going to open up another set of parentheses for this x bar minus mu. So that's 32,000 minus 30,000. Close the parentheses. I'm not closing it on the function, just for that numerator. Divided by, now open up a new set of parentheses for this denominator of s. So 4,000 is our sample standard deviation divided by the uh, square root, SQRT is the function in Excel, square root of the sample size is 35. I'm going to move this Excel over just a little bit so you can continue to see what's happening. Now I'm closing the parentheses just on that square root, close another set of parentheses for the denominator here. So I've got these parentheses for the denominator and now I'm going to hit comma because I'm not closing the function yet. All I've done is uh, typed in this t formula. But now I also need the degrees of, of freedom which is the sample size minus 1. So 34. Sample size minus 1 is the degrees of freedom. I told you earlier we have just one tail. So I'll put that in. Just one. And then now I will close the parentheses for the entire function. Okay. Enter. We get our value. That is the p-value. That's the area that is um, to the right of 32,000. So our p-value, now I can write this, equals 0 0.0028. Now this p-value, let's come down here, this 0 0.0028, that is less than our significance level, our alpha, of 0 0.05 and so therefore if the, if the p value is less than the significance value you're saying there's less of a chance of making an error so I am going to reject the null I can take some action and reject the null Re reject the null hypothesis and so in conclusion that's our decision reject the null so in conclusion uh, evidence suggests This is all the, the proper way to say this. Ev evidence suggests da, 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 that, um, that the mean, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase here, that the mean is greater than 30,000 miles, or that the brakes last on average longer than 30,000 miles. All right, so that's the, that's the finish of that problem. But I, I want to make a couple of notes real quickly here and that is about this this tail here if you were this is hypothetically if you were looking for a tail uh, over to the right over here and your alternative hypothesis was mu is less than something um, then you're going to have to do a little trick right up here in this t distribution. You're going to have to say t dist and then abs, abs, and that's the absolute value of um, x bar minus mu. And you can kind of get in the habit of always doing that. And then you can finish the rest of the formula, but that's just to what that does is it's giving you an absolute distance from the mean so it'll it'll bring it up here because that's what you really want um, if you don't do that it'll give you a, uh, this if x bar minus mu is a negative number then Excel doesn't know what to do with that so it, it just
doesn't give you an answer at all. It just says hash, hashtag num and it doesn't help you. So that absolute value just always pushes the value up here so that it, it gets a, um, a tail up here. Uh, likewise, if you're doing uh, two tails, and in that, in that regard, if you're doing two tails, then you would, let's look at this over here, you would uh, put two right here so that you would get the p-value for the sum of those two tails. All right, I hope that helps. That is a little bit more about hypothesis testing for a mean. Of course, you can do all of this with tables, but I really like Excel because you can, you're not constrained by uh, how big the table is, the number of degrees of freedom that it has, and, and also the, uh, the significance level. This Excel is very good with its, its accuracy and its flexibility.